So the MCU happened to put out a pretty good movie. Let's dive in. So this very week, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 just released in theaters. And as anyone who's seen this channel know, I am not high on the MCU as of late. Lots of not very good movies. And I feel like a lot of people couldn't probably agree with that. Things have gone downhill drastically since Endgame, especially just looking at the box offices of these movies as well. Things are starting to go down a little bit. People are starting to leave the Marvel brand and not trust it the same way that they once did pre-Endgame, which is a fair assessment, I think. But this week, like I mentioned, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 released in theaters, and being as someone who really of a fan of the first couple movies, I really wanted to see this one to finish off the trilogy even though I pretty much wrote off everything else Marvel. And this actually happened to be a pretty good movie. And it wasn't maybe the best movie ever, but I really enjoyed it. I feel like it really closed out the Guardian storyline. And what I'm going to kind of get into today is I feel like this movie should have been the end of the MCU. And here's why. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is mostly a self-contained story that's kind of separate from the rest of the MCU, which I feel like really plays into it fine. It doesn't really connect to the wide universe. And I feel like that's what was kind of needed. And the Guardians have kind of always, except for when their appearance in the Avengers, have always kind of been in this um, self-contained kind of universe up to themselves, which I think like kind of fits for them. And this will be getting into um, some spoilers for this movie. So just a heads up to you folks who haven't seen it and care about this stuff. I'll be getting into spoilers in this, but basically the Guardians of the Galaxy it feels like a movie that should have really ended the MCU. If you look at all the movies that have came out um, since Endgame, they've mostly been not good with the exception of say, I say Spider-Man No Way Home, which I feel like that could have been that off its own as like its own Sony movie with just all the Spider-Man teaming up its own thing. It didn't really have to be tied to the MCU and this kind of felt like the epilogue to the MCU. Like if everything had played out like it did and Endgame was the end and then this was kind of just like a wrap-up movie to kind of see where the Guardians fell, I feel like that would have been a good way to just let the MCU go. Because now that the Guardians 3 have released and I've seen it, I'm pretty much done with the MCU. Nothing else is grabbing my attention. Nothing else down the line is looking like I'm really looking forward to it. And to be quite honest, I don't even know really anything definitive after this year with a couple of movies and shows that are coming out this year. I don't really know what's going forward with the MCU anymore anyway, but this is definitely probably the end of the MCU for me. But let's talk about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. As I say, it was a pretty good story. It really kind of touched on all of the Guardians getting their kind of moment to shine. It had all of the, you know, different characters got to kind of finish up their arcs in a way. Maybe not all as good as others, but it still it seemed to tie things up in a pretty neat bow for finishing off this trilogy. And the thing that this did that some of the movies haven't, say, Ant-Man, Quantumanium, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, hello, they basically just diverted it all from the original movie from of their franchise. And we're just trying to make this kind of MCU movie that just happened to be, you know, with that character in it as opposed to a sequel to that character. Whereas Guardians, if wasn't like just some overarching MCU story that featured the Guardians, it was actually a Guardian story, which is what I felt was good and was needed for this. And this is probably to do with James Gunn, who kind of had his vision for the Guardians, even though I'm sure Disney had plenty of their hands in the pot messing with things. And so he really kind of told his own thing. He was already kind of out the door doing stuff with DC now. But because he's kind of had this love for these characters and what's going on, so he came back and finished it. So I feel like that kind of is why we got that story. And if it was just all Disney, then it would have kind of um, removed that element. And it'd probably been more tied to the larger MCU as opposed to kind of a very pretty self-contained story. And I'm not saying like James Gunn's the greatest thing ever. And I really don't think he's the right guy to be leading DC. 
Um, I think he's got a niche that he's good at and kind of more obscure characters and different things, but I don't think he should be in charge of DC. I think that was a mistake, and I think we're going to see that, especially when you've seen the lineup of movies. But for Guardians, it worked, and like I said, it's not probably going to touch the first Guardians. The first Guardians is one of the best MCU movies up there with the Avengers and Winter Soldier, but the other two probably in my top three movies. Um, this wasn't quite up there at that level, but it was, I would say, it probably would pass Guardians Volume 2 and probably be my second favorite Guardians movie. Um, this is really a, really, if you think about it, this is really a, like a Rocket movie, and the Guardians were kind of separate. We got to see Rocket's backstory, and being as I've read the comics, I know kind of what Rocket's backstory is. I know about the, um, the other animal creatures we see, you know, like, I'm familiar with all these things, the Half-World and all this different stuff, even though they quite go that route in the movie, they were kind of just animals that they got experimented on. But so I guess I, me and other people who had read the comics, we kind of knew this is Rocket's backstory, but to people who hadn't had any idea of this, that just coming in watching the movies, they would have probably been a little shocked, like, you know, because they had already hinted in the past movies about Rocket's past, but they hadn't really explained what happened to him. And it was really a pretty pretty horrible stuff like that they showed like they actually didn't show him getting cut up or anything but like um it was really kind of a horrific thing that happened to him and it kind of showed and gave rocket this kind of why he is the way he is and what he why he got where he you know got ended up with the guardians and all that stuff so i think it really fit i didn't think they were going to kill rocket i mean quite honestly um you know there was several characters they did a lot of fake out uh, as far as deaths go um, and I guess everyone was expecting them to kill people off, and surprisingly, nobody died off, which I think is fine. Um, just even if the characters are never going to come back, I don't think you necessarily have to kill them off. Um, hello, Iron Man, Captain America, all those guys, you didn't have, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it was fine that they didn't do that. Although I did suspect, out of all of them, I felt like Rocket was the one I thought was going to bite the dust. But I'm glad that he didn't, and he got the kind of you know, have the full arc and become the leader of the Guardians at the end. And then we get some good moments with the rest of the characters. Um, obviously, Drax is kind of a comic relief character, like usual. And he did get kind of a payoff a little bit, but I still wasn't quite thrilled because the comics Drac... Comics Drac... I can't speak today. The comics version of Drax is sometimes portrayed as a little bit more dumb in the sense um like he's a kind of a mindless brute sometimes but he's not like this comedic relief with no intelligence at all kind of character so i feel like that was like something that they kind of missed in these later guardians movies kind of making him too much karma and i feel like a lot of people have spoken about that but I think Drax still kind of got wrapped up and he got the state of the Guardians and on Nowhere and all that. Nebula kind of had this whole arc going all the way through. And they did have Gamora in the movie and I didn't think... Now I guess she wasn't like super necessary, but it was alright she was there. She Even though it wasn't the original Gamora, she kind of got closure, so to speak, with like the Guardians and went off with the Ravagers. Um, speaking of the Ravagers... We did get some appearances of the Ravagers, which we saw in the second movie, which was played by Sylvester Stallone and some other characters, showing Starhawk, Martin X, and those guys. And this is kind of a cool nod because I'm a big fan of the 90s Guardians of the Galaxy run, which is the original Guardians of the Galaxy um, that I'll hopefully be talking about later on down the line, go delving more into their story. But it was nice to get a nod, even though they're not anything like the Guardians from the comic, and they didn't really have any um, role in it. But it was still nice that they kind of acknowledged that, I guess, anyway. And I also, a little thing, they threw in Nathan Fillion in this in kind of like an odd role. Because he was originally supposed to be Wonder Man in Guardians Volume 2. And then they obviously race-swapped um, Wonder Man, supposedly. And he's going to be in his own show by the guy that played Black Manta in the Aquaman movies. is going to be playing Wonder Man. Which is, like, so stupid that they did that. And I think, you know... Um, Nathan Finn's a little older, but I think he could have probably been a f pretty good Wonder Man. Um, so it's kind of sad we didn't get to see it, but I guess that's why he got, ended up getting in the movie, and I guess he's buds with James Gunn because he was also in the Suicide Squad as well. But just a little aside. The biggest gripes I had with this movie were obviously Adam Warlock. Um, Adam Warlock was completely pointless to this movie. He didn't even need to be in it. 
he obviously had a very pivotal thing that he did at the end of the movie, which I guess, as I can mention spoilers, he saves Peter Quill from dying at the very end of the movie, and kind of a little mini redemption arc type thing that he went through, but he was really not non-consequential to the movie, and it was really kind of sad that they put the character in that situation because he should have been involved in the Infinity Arc. If you read the comics, everyone knows who's read the comics that he was a huge player in the Infinity Arc and all the different things with the Infinity Gems, Thanos, and all that was very heavily part of with Adam Warlock involved. So it was really kind of disappointing that they never got to do that, but even so, they probably could have still figured out a way to make him a better character in this. Like I said, he was mostly just a pointless character he didn't really add anything to the story, he didn't do anything in the story, and he didn't need to be there. So it was really kind of pointless to even include Warlock, and that part felt more like the MCU just kind of squandering a um, pretty popular, at least in the comics, character that could have been used to be a big player in the MCU. And the other little gripe that I had was Cosmo obviously is a dog, but in the comics it's a male dog. So I was like a little thrown off when I heard the voice because in other iterations we hear Cosmo and he's like got this like deep Russian accent. And then we hear this like little kind of girl Russian accent um, from the dog and it kind of threw me off. Guardian of Galaxies will tell Cosmo why they broke into Continuum Cortex. Or Cosmo will conjure worse psychic Golak. Broke into the... Do not feed Cosmo get Biscuit's Peter Quill. And I've heard reasonings to why that is, because they're honoring the dog that, you know, went up into space or whatever. I've heard stuff like that. But still, that was, like, weird. It just threw me off because that didn't sound at all like I was a picture of Cosmo. And that, honestly, what bugged me a lot was something like that. Race swapping a dog. Or, excuse me, gender swapping a dog. But that was a little weird, but... That was one of my, that and Adam Welk were probably my biggest gripes with this movie. But ultimately, it was a pretty good movie. And I think that the Guardians are done. Like, they said star Lord will return, but I don't really know. Maybe in some kind of Avengers movie, they might bring him back. But I don't know if Chris Pratt's coming back. So I don't really know at the future. Is. But I think that this movie should have been kind of sitting right after Endgame. Like, to kind of close out the MCU. Because... If the MCU would have been smart about things and Marvel Studios would have been smart about things, they could have planned things a lot different. But they obviously had no plan because Phase 4 was just a cluster miss thing with no point to it, no direction, just a bunch of random movies that had no direction with characters that most people didn't really care about. And so it just led to this nothing. And so at this point, it would have just been better if they kind of let the MCU go at the height and then kind of brought back Marvel in a different way later on after a little bit of a break. And I think that Guardians would have, 3 would have been a good way to close that off. Most everybody of in prominence in the MCU got kind of a closure and they got their trilogies and all that. The Guardians could have finished it off. You could have thrown out, still could have thrown out Spider-Man. I think that could have been kind of, like I said, a separate thing from the MCU, but... This could have really been a good way to cap off and kind of, you could have maybe added in something to kind of close out the rest of the MCU. And I think this would have been a good way to end all that. But moving forward, there's nothing left in the MCU that I'm caring about looking at. Um, so we'll see if anything in the future changes my mind, but I doubt it. Um, like I said in a previous video, I'm pretty much done with this stuff. I'm going to stick to the old stuff and see what else is out there. And maybe one day... Marvel, someone will take over Marvel that actually cares about the comics and the source material, and we'll see if that ever happens. But for now, Guardians is probably the end of the MCU for me, and it should have been the MCU, end of the MCU period. But let me know what you guys think. Did you like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Um, is there anything else in the MCU that you're looking forward to after, now that Guardians is out? And um, what do you think about things going forward? Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll take you guys next time.